Hey everyone, Stefan here. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the Multi-Sculpt Blender extension, which I developed to help easily sculpt multiple objects at the same time, which, as you may know, is something you can't normally do in Blender. And in my experience as a character artist, this is very, very useful functionality because on almost every single character I've ever made, I needed to at least tweak the overall proportions of it at a later stage when the character already has like a bunch of belts, pouches, armor pieces and whatnot. And doing that one by one for each object, uh, you know, going like, let's say if I wanted to make the waist narrower, this is, you know, very, very annoying and difficult and not efficient at all. So whether it's that uh, or if it's posing a finished sculpt, this add-on provides the solution to that problem. And so, before we get into it, first here's how to install it real quick. It's uh, the same as any other Blender extension really. Well, we're going to get extensions under preferences and then from the drop down menu at the top right, install from disk, navigate to where you've saved the zip file and you can enable an on install and install from disk and save preferences if you want it to be on as soon as you start up Blender. And the add-on is located here in the side panel when you press N under multi-sculpt. Now, the way uh, multi-sculpt works is whenever you select your objects and press create multi-sculpt, it's going to create a proxy object, which is a combination of all the objects you had selected. Then you can start sculpting them as one object uh, or tweaking them any way you like, as long as you don't change the number of vertices so any deformation in any mode is fine as long as you don't add or delete any vertices between pressing these two buttons and this goes for the multi sculpt object and the original objects so during this time don't change the number of vertices and when you're done you can press transfer multi sculpt and it'll transfer all the modifications back to the original meshes now, I've deliberately set this character up in such a way as to illustrate a few things which are good to keep in mind when using this add-on. And let's just, using this selection, press Create Multi-Sculpt. And we're gonna get this warning, which is that some meshes are instanced. And you can view the full list of instances in the system console. I didn't wanna include the list here in this prompt because it's maybe a long list. I don't wanna flood the screen. Uh, maybe in some situations you have a bunch of instances, but you can open the system console from here, window, toggle system console, and we get this message. So it's these circle objects, these small circle objects, if we undo, because we're in the multi-sculpt mesh right now. So it's these small circle objects which are instanced right now. And here under the data tab, you can press this number and it's going to make them unique. Uh, as soon as you uh, press create multi-sculpt, instancing is going to be cleared for the multi-sculpt object, but it's not going to be cleared for your original object. So if you want to transfer anything back, make sure the instancing is cleared or they're all going to receive the same deformation because they're essentially the same object. They're instances of one object. And the other thing you may have noticed is if we press create multi-sculpt again, uh, you notice we only have one eye and one armband. Uh, so if we undo, you can see that these two objects actually have a bunch of modifiers, among which is a mirror modifier. So these are going to be disabled for when you create the multi-scope proxy so that you can work with the base ge geometry and then transfer everything back. And they're going to be preserved on your original meshes. So let's do this again. And the final thing is these hair strands, even though they were in the original selection, were not added to the proxy. And this is because they are curves and there is no sculpt mode for curves. You would need to apply visual geometry to mesh if you wanted to sculpt these. And you don't have to worry about this. Uh, your selection is going to be automatically filtered to only contain mesh objects whenever you create multi-sculpt. Just something to keep in mind if you're wondering why your curves aren't being added to the multi-scope mesh. So let's select everything again and deselect the ground plane and create multi-scoped and ignore the instancing for now and just go into scope mode. Now it looks like this object inherited a face set from one of the objects so we can either just turn them off or clear them and now we can finally do some sculpting. I'm turning on symmetry. So let's say I wanted to change the proportions of this character, which like I said, I often need to do. Uh, and now this is far, far easier 
especially now that I could also use the projected fall of grab brush on all the objects uh, without worrying about you know anything intersecting once I'm moving one object and not the other. And as soon as we're done, we can press transfer multi sculpt. And this is going to take around 10 seconds for this character. Uh, maybe a little bit more now that I'm recording. We'll see. And it's going to show us how long it took in the in the system console. So let's check. 10 seconds and 60, 10.6 seconds. So it's not bad for an 800,000 uh, vert mesh, which is 47 objects. And this is not entirely ideal. Normally, uh, maybe sometimes you'd have multi-res on a bunch of objects and it is going to be preserved and you're going to be working on the base subdivision level but this does not currently have any multi-res so this is you know not that heavy but i've also tested it out on a character which has 15 million verts and it took around eight minutes to transfer so i think not bad for the amount of geometry and now we also have the transfer color data option which is going to transfer any painting you may have done when you create your multi scope mesh. So let's do, I don't know. So any painting is going to be transferred back. It's still going to take around the same amount of time. So, so there it is. All the objects now have the painting which was done. And let's undo this. You may have noticed I go into object mode before I press create and transfer multi scope. It's still going to work if I'm not in object mode, but uh, it doesn't always register with the undo stack properly for some reason uh, it's still going to undo it may just take a couple of steps to do it instead of one just something to keep in mind now the other two buttons uh, first one is going to be isolate multi sculpt which uh, is going to hide if we were to unhide everything and i wanted to hide everything because now we have the multi sculpt object and all the original objects selected and this it's just going to hide all the original objects associated with that multi sculpt. Actually, we have two multi sculpt objects right now, which is why they're both showing up. We can delete the old one. And the other one is going to be hide, which is, you know, the opposite. It's going to hide the multi sculpt and unhide all the objects, all the original objects which are associated with it. And lastly, we have multi res apply base all, which is just something which uh, is going to be convenient if you have a bunch of objects with multi-res with some multi-res displacement sculpted into them because you may have noticed whenever you have multi-res let's quickly add it for this object and let's subdivide it once so if you yeah vertex color is not supported in multi-res still unfortunately but if we do let's go into solid view so we can see what we're doing a little bit better so if you do some sculpting in multi-res as soon as you go to your base subdivision level and it's not there anymore so or you know if you go back into object mode uh, unless you know if preview is set to zero uh, it's not there but you can do apply base and it's going to apply the displacement and now whenever you turn off the multi-res modifier you still get the displacement you sculpted in on the higher subdivision levels and this is just going to do it for all of the selected objects which have a multi-res modifier on them that way whenever you create your multi sculpt mesh multi-res is going to be preserved and you're going to be seeing an accurate representation of what your meshes look like when you were sculpting them with multi-res so this should be ideally done automatically when doing any sculpting with multi-res but it is just very 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 slow so there's an option for it here it's disabled by default for a very good reason and one final thing to keep in mind is uh, if your object has any shape keys and you try to apply uh, base on a multi-res object it's uh, not going to show up any result because the shape keys are actually overriding whatever the apply base is doing so i've set it up so it automatically skips the object uh, if you were to do it here it's going to do it but then it's going to uh, not be visible and the shape key is going to be over overriding it and if you delete the shape keys you're going to see it but then the displacement gets doubled it's kind of a mess so 
it's uh, better, I think, that it skips uh, any objects with the shape key. And then you can apply or delete your shape keys before you apply base if you want to do it. So uh, let's undo all of this and just uh, get rid of this modifier. The last thing I want to mention is if your object already has some shape keys, then any multi-scoped deformation that you apply is going to be added as a shape key because the deformation has to go somewhere. And if you already have shape keys, it's, you know, they're going to override whatever we apply to the base mesh. So in that case, it's not going to delete your shape keys. It's just going to add the deformation as a new shape key. For instance, you know, this auto eye has a bunch of uh, shape keys. They are preserved. It just adds a new one. And so this is pretty much it for this overview. I have tried to break this add on in pretty much any way that I could think of. But if you do encounter any bugs, please do get in touch. This is the first release of Multiscoped, which I'm using right now. And it's going to be very helpful in uh, for me to develop it further. So any feedback is appreciated. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy this extension. See ya.